What's up, Dragon Brood? So today we have a very interesting deck, but before we get into that, I want to ask everybody, do you like box openings? Because if so, I may share one here on the channel. We opened up a collector's booster box of Zendikar Rising on the chat or on the Twitch stream actually uh, yesterday, and it was pretty crazy. So if y'all want to see that, let me know. I'll put that here on the channel. Also, in general, if you like box openings, maybe I'll schedule one live that we can do live stream here on YouTube as well. Just let me know in the comments how you feel. Good response. I'll go ahead and do that for you. But anyway, this deck I'm just referring to as Naya Aggro. It's a type of deck I've been kind of trying to figure out how to work with a bunch of plus one plus one tokens in the Naya list. And it turns out somebody that goes by Alf MTG actually shared this list or similar list, actually not this identical list but something very similar in the arena deck list Twitter feed. So check that out uh, as well and give them some props. Before as usual, before we get into this, you know I'm gonna ask, please remember to like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you get notified every single time I have a video up. But for now, let's go take a look at this very interesting looking Naya aggro list. Okay, taking a look at this list, we're going to start at the top with a couple of spike field hazards. Uh, this may not even be necessary in this list. I honestly could probably get away with these being shocks instead and we'd be a little bit happier. But I'm going to try it out like this because it is something that gives us a little versatility. And it still doubles as a land where we just may need that in a three colored list. Playing Swarm Shambler. The interesting thing I like about Swarm Shambler, I think what people forget is they get caught up trying to put more counters on it. But the reality is if anything you have that has plus one plus one counters on it gets targeted, you get an additional 1-1 one, one creature. And there seems to be a lot in this list. So there's a good chance you're going to be getting some 1-1s. One, Luminarch Aspirant, big fan of this card. I feel like it should probably be played in almost every list uh, that's trying to play creatures in white. Three Scavenging Ooze, because we all know how good that is. Uh, there's the Sky Mall. You know, I've had it in a couple of lists recently, and I'm a big fan of the card, so definitely goes in here. Bone Crusher Giant, just all-around good card, and it's a source of removal for us. Orn Refus, this is one, uh, and when we previewed it and did all those preview videos, this is one I really knew I was going to be trying to get into a list at some point, and now just seems like the right time, and it fits perfectly with this style of deck. Bajay's Lieutenant. Again, just giving you some protection uh, for all your creatures with counters on them. Three Winotas. We don't need Winota to win in this list, and we don't have that many humans. Really, we only have eight. But if you're getting to attack and get free creatures, with as much damage as we could potentially do, it could just be a win anyway. Then we're rocking a couple of Ember Cleaves, three Stone Cold Serpents. Lands, we're going with some Plains, Mountains, three Forest. Full set each of the appropriate pathways and Fable Passage. We do have a sideboard for this as well. It'll be in the list you can download down below. However, we are playing some best of ones as usual just so we can hopefully get this in front of more decks. But let's go hop into the arena. Well, this feels pretty good, right? We get to play a green mana, Swarm Shambler. If we need white, we can fetch on two, potentially. Yeah, this is kind of the tough part with the pathway. You do get caught having to choose which is the best mode to be in. And you don't always know, right? What you need on turn one isn't what you need on turn five. But we can't not choose green. We know that much. So in this hand, it's a little bit easier for us. We may... Well... Depending on what the opponent does, is if they're playing, say, like, Mono Red or something, then maybe... Well, actually, you know what? Even then, I don't think it matters. Because we'd have Swarm Shambler, play the Fable Passage, fetch for a Plains, and then just put a counter on the Swarm Shambler on turn two. So, yeah, that all seems okay. What I'm saying is I don't know how this goes bad by us taking a turn oh and they actually are there's a fervent champ wow that's so funny that we actually said that and it happened sometimes it's like you just know okay so here like i said let's stick with the plan and fetch for one because worst case scenario 
the following turn, we can shoot something. We can turn this into a 3-3. Three, three. Well, we'll see how it sets up. And we're only playing two Embercleaves because you don't always have double red until like turn five or six sometimes. So you want to give yourself a reasonable chance of playing it when it happens. I mean, I'm now here, here's one of the things that's likely to happen. They go to attack with the Fervent Champ. We go to block. We put a plus one, plus one counter on our Swarm Shambler. And then they pump up their Fervent Champ. That's fine. That means it likely cost them a card or something. We didn't take any damage. And we get to kill something maybe next turn with the Bone Crusher Giant. Or just play an Orn Reef Ooze if we so choose. So this likely isn't going to go too bad for us. Or something just happened to our opponent. Oh, they scooped. Okay. Oh, this is tough because like we're going to keep, but realistically, we have to draw two lands for this hand to do anything. I probably should mulligan. Four, three, four mana things and only two land is not good. Because here, even if we draw land, land, we're not playing anything on turn three. We almost want to go draw land, draw a three mana thing, then draw land. That's kind of ideally how we could draw it up here if we could have whatever we want. Somebody got the My Little Pony secret layer, though. Check that out. That's pretty cool. I don't know if it's a secret layer. I think that was a, a Hascon thing or something. Definitely going to get green. Play a Swarm Chambler. All right, that's not too bad. We get a free turn, effectively. I like this. That That's not bad. Now if we could just draw three mana thing and then draw a mana, that, that, that'd be perfect. Here I'm actually gonna put the counter on the Luminarch Ascension. Uh, Luminarch Ascension, Luminarch Aspirant. Mostly because if they do decide to kill it, it'll create a counter. Also, if their only removal cards are Heartless Axe, they now can't target anything because both of our things have counters on them. So now we need to draw that Orn Refuse. That's what we're aiming for here. Orn Refuse would be fantastic. Uh, they might Blood Chief Thirst here, though. Nope, they didn't. Okay, well, this is what we we're afraid might happen here. We knew this was a possibility. So... Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm sort of tempted to just do this, but... Hmm. Because even if I were to fetch, what am I going to go get? Probably just a mountain in case we draw Embercleave. So, we're going to attack. I'm just trying to decide if I want to attack with the Shambler. Yeah, I think I do. I just want to attack with the Shambler. I'm going to spread the love around just a little bit, just in case. Because you don't know. Now, it'll be interesting, on depending on what the opponent plays here, right? Because, well, either way, actually, we have two Winotas in hand, so we'll probably just lead with Winotas. I think that's going to be the play. The only downside is that if Winota does resolve, the humans we get are actually all even. So maybe this list needs to play, like, one uh, Kenrith or something. <laughs> but we'll see. Okay, another Swarm Shamrock actually isn't bad. I don't hate that. I think we're going to put this on red as well. I'm going to assume this is getting countered. Or they could target it, actually. If they're sitting on Heartless Axe, this is one of the few things they can actually hit with it. So that kind of makes sense. All right, Mystical Dispute, that works. We'll put the counter on the ass, Sprint. I mean, this is reaching the point where the opponent at some point is going to have to do something proactive. Them just kind of sitting here waiting for something to happen <clears throat> is not going to benefit them greatly. And they missed a land drop here. So... Hmm... 
And they're going to take at least six here. All right. So we just attack. Force the opponent to act here. I mean, maybe they just have Heartless Axe. I don't know. Remove some counters. Fair. Um, opponent's at seven. I think I'm going to wuss out and go here. Just on the off chance that they have... Well, a spike field hazard. That's fine. Okay, well, so be it, opponent. You had the things. What can I do? I guess I should have put this on green so I could take advantage of this scavenging ooze. Hmm. Alright, well, I guess we... Okay, so let's say they do something to Winota. Okay, well, never mind. Guess we don't have to find out. Okay, this hand's actually pretty strong, all things considered. Uh, we'll keep this. This one's green, red. This one's green, white. This one's... Or red, white. This one's green, white. So, let's put this one on... Hmm. Put this one on green... All right, if this is rogues, which for some reason I keep wanting to say fairies, <laughs> hopefully we'll get to kill a rogue here. Boom, there we go. Let's see what you got, opponent. A Vantress Gargoyle. Well, I was not planning on running into those today, let me tell you. Good news is we can at least go toe-to-toe -to -toe with those. They can block and fight, and that's all fine and good. Nighthawk Scavenger. Could end up being a bit annoying for us, if we're being honest. Though I think if we're going to do anything, let's go ahead and take out some rogues here. Not the way we really want to, but, you know. Uh, what to do here? Man, we drew all the three and four mana things. This is not how this deck wants to progress. And what's this? Can't block unless you have four or more cards, which they have four. Hmm. Okay, no attacks. I mean, they are going to be able to mill us. Ooh, that Winota's a little tough. Would have been nice to pick that up. What do you have? Four cards? Three cards. I mean, if we get them to spend a card, they can't block. So, meh. Just attack. I mean, make them counter something. Then go for it. Alright, they're passing. Ooh, Sky Malls might be good later. I mean, it's like they don't know we have Bone Crusher Giant. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just going to attack. If they block, they block. Have it. All right, five cards in the yard. Well, now the castle of Vantress. Or the Vantress card. Oh, that's six cards in the yard. Yeah. 
All right, they didn't have a rogue to flash in. That is important information to know. Now the Thieves Guild Enforcer puts four cards in the yard, so now we have nine. Ten. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll block. Why not? This probably gets countered. Nope, it doesn't. Interesting. Oh my gosh, what are they holding if that didn't get countered? And not a removal card? Their hand just land? What's going on? I'm so confused. I mean, they can definitely attack us for eight. I mean, they can get back a Winota or something if they have a Zerasan in hand, but none of our things fly. So Zerasan hits us for nine. They get back, I'll assume, maybe not even Winota. Maybe, I don't know. But they're just dead, right? Because we have another Sky Mall, and they're at exactly ten. Literally, unless they have a duress that's going to make us discard the Sky Mall. That's the only way we lose here. Alright, they're taking our Ember Cleave. All fine and good. Alright. Whip up. I mean, nothing else we can do. We're oh, we're dead anyway. That's only <laughs> I thought it was two more. Never mind. That's only eight. Yeah, we were in bad shape anyway. The best we could have done is Bowser's Lieutenant and Black and maybe here. Yep, I goofed that up actually. I did my math poorly. <laughs> ah well. GG's opponent. That's what I get for for being bad on some days. We don't have green land, so yeah, we kind of have to mulligan this one. This is better. We'll keep, get rid of one of those. Oh, we don't have a white. Oh no. Okay, well, we'll see if we draw one. All right, come on, white land. Didn't happen. Nope, let's see what the opponent wants to do here, then. Ruin crab. Well, that has potential. Well, there's a white land. And I actually like that. Because we could potentially get two creatures that are protected from Heartless Act. See if they'll forget and block. Oh, nope, they opted not to. Alright, we'll remove that Bone Crusher Giant. Okay. Now we're going to have creatures big enough to punch through Ruin Crabs at least. Though I'm assuming the opponent's going to be sitting on a bunch of removal at this stage, but who the heck knows? Hmm. They did flip more creatures, so I guess we have to turn this to green. Embercleave be damned, you know? Uh, let's go ahead... Play this. See what the opponent does. Oh, 
All right, they opted not to counter. So we're going to target itself. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Well, they're serious about not blocking, so here we go. Okay, that lets them search, but even if they remove the even creature, let's say it is. Okay, well, that's fine. I'm assuming that gets rid of... Well, I don't even know. Maybe... Alright, get rid of scavenging. Sure. Alright, well, Other big removal cards, or are we just reading it? <laughs> All right, flipping some stuff in the yard. All relevant actions. Go ahead and play Maul. Put it on the Orn Reef. Gonna drown in the locks, sounds fine. Do we want to put the opponents only at four? I mean, at six. This basically puts them at four. You know what, though? I'm going to put one into play. And we'll see what happens here. All right. Mill them cards. Still have 38 cards, so... Not overly concerned about it at this point. I mean, if the opponent has another kill card, this is bad. I mean, have to be honest about it. With no sideboard, no protection cards, anything like that, this is pretty rough. No arachnirs in the in the graveyard, though we do sideboard them. Mmm. Now this we can get behind a little bit. Let's see if we can get them to commit. To stopping this first. Alright, we'll put the counter on it. I mean, nothing else we're going to do. They're not blocking? Oh my. Okay, so we just wait for them to tap to cast something. Oh, they didn't do it. <laughs> uh, well, extinction event. Uh, we will wait till... Well, they haven't played a land yet. They're going to exile things. Assuming they're going to call it even. Alright, I guess we just shoot them. Alright, our mana is a little bit better this turn. Uh, unfortunately... Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is fine. This is fine. We'll come in at green. And then, if we feel we need to, we could play this in as red. Oh, well, look. That makes that a whole not problem anymore, huh? This aspirant's gonna just die a horrible death, isn't it? And this is a red-white land. Eh, okay. So be it. Seems fine. Because at the end of the day, we'd rather... If this is something like a rogue deck, we'd much rather just have Stoneclaw Serpent. Stands have much more value to us. In the long run. Hmm. Let's set this to green. Try to run out of scavenging ooze. And then we'll just 
Pass. No attack. Exactly. Don't want to run into anything. We know better. Uh, while we have an opportunity, I'm going to go ahead and remove this aspirant. Protect both of our creatures from heartless acts and whatnot. Okay, this is where things start to get interesting, because it's kind of like, when can we pull the trigger on either Stone Cold Serpent uh, or Winota? And I don't know this answer right offhand. Oh, I guess I should have put that on green, because I could have threatened more. But, I mean, here I can just spike field hazard the Enforcer. Okay. Let's get in there with the scavenging ooze. Oh, this is what we're doing. This is tricky. Okay, so... We remove a swarm. And then we'll kill... Actually, do I even want to do that? Wait, 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 wait. How many cards do I have in my graveyard? I just have two. So they're targeting it with the drown in the lock. Like, if I just remove the card again... I mean, I'll just remove them all, I guess. They're wasting double drown in the lock to kill our scavenging goose. That's cute. Alright, well, since I have the opportunity, sure. That feels like that worked out very well for us. Like, we're gonna get two tokens. Oh, because it didn't have the counter yet. Never mind. I needed to target the, the swarm shambler again. Okay, so it did go off. Okay, did go the way I thought. Okay. Oh, because it already had tokens. Or counters. Alright. Good, good, good. Now the bonus down to two cards. Increase, well, still two cards. Increasing the odds that we will get to resolve either the Winota or the Stone Coal Serpent. Bottom, bottom. We like that. We like that. Opponent plays them down to one card. All right, team. It's a matter of what do we gamble on here? Oh, gosh. Do we play the Stone Cold Serpent or do we play the Winota? And there's only two cards in our yard. Oh, man. Here goes. Oh, there's a pause. We don't like that. <laughs> Heartless Act for our Winota. Oh, a Brazen Borrower. Okay, that's actually not that bad. We are actually perfectly okay with that. No attacks. We're just going to get max value next turn. Mmm, got there. <laughs> well, we didn't get a one mana thing, but we'll keep this otherwise. See if maybe this Aspirant being a 2-2 will be good enough. The odds aren't high, but we're going to find out. No, oh, that makes my heart sad. <laughs> oh, we so don't want this, but here we go. Here's hoping. It's probably not going to work, though. Because even a spike-filled hazard is going to kill it. Yep. Such is life. I think we were doomed either way. So we're going to go with this. 
and pass the turn. No need to like activate, give them the opportunity to bone crush or giant it or anything, stomp it. We can wait till they go to cast something or tap the red mana. Oh, we don't even have a creature in the graveyard. Oh, duh. Because that exiles one of the random things that rarely comes up with the spike field hazard. Okay. You can play an extra land. All right, so it looks like we're going to be facing some Omnath action. That is not a good thing for us. Hmm. All right, in the turn. I'm assuming Omnath play a land... Do some crazy things. Yeah, in hindsight, I sequenced this, sequenced this all wrong. I could have just went with the scavenging ooze, forced them to have a bone crusher giant the next turn, and then see if maybe we get away with. Uh, the Aspirant. And that's mostly forgetting that the Spikefield Hazard exiles. Because that really does change things. Okay, they're going to escape to the wilds here. Ooh, that's not good for us. What's the most we could do next turn? There's nothing in the graveyard to remove, sadly. I mean, we have an Embercleave, but we really can't do anything with it here. I mean, nothing of real substance. Yeah, this, this is an example. Just like, misplaying on turn two probably cost me this game. Because at this point, let's say they... It turns out they didn't have uh, the proper cards... Oh no, now this this story gets a little more interesting now. Okay, what is the opponent likely to be able to do next turn? They'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe eight lands. They can play Omnath, use four. They can put a land into play, gain for a life. They can fetch to get mana. Still giving them one, two, three, four. Plus others. They'll ultimatum. Then maybe we can come through with the mall. Opponent's not going to block. We get ten through here. Opponent's going to go to at least 14, then they're going to get off a Genesis Ultimatum, and we'll see what happens. I mean, we're going to be able to do 14 next turn. So that would be exactly enough right now. Also assuming we don't draw any Bone Crusher Giants, Spike Field Hazards, anything else. Or even a second Sky Maul, which would be another 4 damage. But there's a good chance here, that you, depending on what cards the opponent has in their unknown cards, they could potentially play both Omnath and Ultimatum here, if they have the right mana. But we'll see. Oh, they're just going Genesis Ultimatum instead. Well, they could still hit an Omnath and have some action go off. Okay, well now they're just dead. They don't know they're dead because they think they can block here, but I would assume they're just dead. But they still get to play two lands, so not so fast, really. All right, Omnath. Still have access to a mana. 
You can play a land. Game four. Still have two mana. You're still at the 14, like we anticipated. I mean, if they have another land, they can go fetch now. So we have two, three, four, five, six. They can use three. Oh, they have seven, actually. So they can go down to four. Alright. Plus one, go to five. Give them six, because that one's untapped. Escape to the wilds again. Green Warden. Does Green Warden have reach? Oh, it randomly does. Oh, that's so bad. That is so bad. Why does that have reach? Oh, the opponent got so lucky there. Wow. Wow. That is so phenomenally bad luck for us. I mean, we can't kill them. 16 minus 7 is only 9. I mean, they can ultimatum us into oblivion here, so let's see what happens. I mean, we do have 16 in the air, so this is not nothing. But if they are playing Terror of the Peaks, they could Terror of the Peaks Thin Giant and kill our, our big equipped monster here. Okay, none of those matter to us. So we're not worried about any of those cards. Literally, it's Ultimatum, Terror of the Peaks, and I think we're clear the rest of the way. I, on the off chance, they could be playing, uh, I guess, Giant Killer, maybe. But usually they don't have those main deck. Those are mostly in the Adventures versions. We're at 17, so I doubt they're going to be able to pump up their creatures enough to kill us with two blockers here. Yep. Doing Omnath things. Alright, we get a 1-1 one, one to replace it. So yeah, even if they pumped everything again, we're still going to have two blockers. Cobra, sure. Not a threat to us. More mana. Now, if that last card's ultimatum, they they might be onto something here. I mean, they're able to get 13 damage through right now, so maybe. Oh, there you go. They found it. Because they can pump everything twice. Oh, no, no, because we can block the two biggest ones currently. Oh, no. Oh, now they got us. Now they got us. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Oh, they have exactly enough. Yeah, all they do is fetch and we're dead. Oh, we're dead anyway. Yeah, I have to admit, this deck's actually pretty cool. Uh, looks like my only time I was losing was when I was actually making dumb mistakes. Uh, so, I, I say that. The the last one against Omnath, I sequenced poorly in the early part of that game. But it really 
made a big difference because if I were able to attack with even uh, one more relevant attack there, the turn or two earlier with counters on the scavenging ooze, that would have made a big difference. But yeah, they, I think if you're interested, really give this deck a look. I mean, there's something to it here. Uh, it's the thing that's good is it attacks from multiple different angles. You know, sometimes you're just playing straight aggression. Sometimes, you know, you're just attacking in the air. Sometimes it's an Ember Cleave situation. Late game, you're going to get a Winota, get two or three creatures and win that way. Sometimes you're playing the long game with the counters and the Bosri's Lieutenant. It's one of the rare times I would say a deck has kind of come together where your focus is in a couple of different spots and it works out. So yeah, uh, all I can say is sorry about my mistakes, but do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> but yeah, uh, in, in all seriousness, really, really give this deck a look. Uh, I I'm played it poorly and made some mistakes and still almost won those games. I mean, and that speaks a lot to the deck, I think, that even making mistakes, I still almost won those games just the same. Uh, but remember... Give me a comment down below and let me know if you do want to see that box opening that we had on stream on Monday. Uh, and if you just want me to do a live stream box opening here on YouTube, if that would be interesting to you. Uh, either way. And as always, you'll be able to get this deck list, links to my Twitch, Discord, merchandise, everything else down in the description below. But that's all I have for you for now. We will see you next time.